Hola, soy totalmente severo y hoy vamos a hacer algo en C4D. <laughs> Thanks, Joe, for whatever that was. Today we're going to take a look at using the Voronoi fracture in conjunction with X particles to create an interesting reveal. Let's jump into it. First, we're going to start off with a simple scene, and then we're going to go a little more complicated. I'm going to start by creating a cube. Then I'm going to go into MoGraph and grab the Voronoi fracture. I'm going to put the cube as a child, and then by default, it gives you a point generator distribution. The cool thing about this is you can use any object, including particles, to create your fracture. So I went through, and I'm using this base one, and then I created a secondary one with exponential. So what exponential does is it gives you a bunch of smaller ones in one spot and you can control that by changing your settings here. So like right now I have it down here at the bottom or we can put it over here in the corner and I'm going to keep it up here for now. And then you can adjust your deviation which sucks them in together in the corner here. Adjust your point amount. I have it set to 60 currently. Then I'm going to go into the MoGraph again and grab an effector. I'm going to grab the push apart and I'm going to change a few settings in here. I'm going to set this to 45. I have it set to push apart. Then I'm going to go into the fall off and I'm going to create two fields. I'm going to create a random field. I have that set to overlay. This is what my field looks like. I have it set to noise and I'm using dense and I have it scaled up pretty high. And I'm just using the random to break up the linear field. So in my linear field, all it does is it just animates across. Kind of see this is what it does. It just breaks open this. So then the next thing I did, I took the fragile object and I created a dynamic body tag and I set it to trigger at velocity peak so that when it gets pushed out by the effector, it will start and grab some gravity. So here's what that looks like. It's already looking pretty cool. Next, I'm going to create a plane effector and in the plane effector, I'm going to go in and turn on rotation and I'm going to drive that rotation with the two fields I've already created. I'm going to stick the random field in here and the linear field. And I have the random field set to overlay and I left the linear field. So that's just going to give us a little extra rotation. And see now they're kind of rotating away. All right, so that's the base part of the effect. Let's create the X particles. This took me a little bit to figure out, but it's actually really simple. You just have to know what to push. So next I created an emitter. I set it to object. I dragged the Voronoi fracture in the object field. And then inside the Voronoi fracture in the selections tab, I turned on inside faces, which gives you this selection tag right here. Then I drag that into the selection section here of the emitter. I set it to emit from poly area. And then down here at the bottom, you have to set this to connect objects. If you don't, let's say you set it to any object, for example, it doesn't emit from the objects themselves. So you have to set it to connect objects. Then in the mission tab, I have it set to rate and I have it starting emissions at 21 and have it emitting to about frame 88. I set the lifespan to 10 with a variation of two. And then I have the birth rate set up to 60,000. Then I have the speed set to zero. And I created a few modifiers. Started by creating a gravity modifier. I have that set to gravity strength 95 with a variation of eight. Then I have mapping set to parameter of gravity strength and I have range min set to frame 20 and I have range max set to frame 50 and I'm mapping it to age. So essentially the older the particles get, the more effect the gravity has. Next, I created a drag field. I left it pretty much its base setting, which is set to air, the drag coefficient set to sphere, and the force multiplier set to 100. And then under mapping, I set the parameter to drag coefficient value, and I have the range min at frame zero and the range max at frame 20, and I have that mapped to age. You can see it's kind of building up a little bit more. Finally, I created a turbulence. I set the turbulence to curl, I have the scale at 48, frequency at 100, octaves at 1, and the strength at 17. And then I'm using mapping, set the parameter to strength, set the range min to frame 0, and the range max to frame 15, and I mapped to age. So if you see, just giving you this little curliness. Alright, so this is the base setup. So let's do something a little more interesting. So I'm going to take our logo and blow out the center of this to reveal the logo color. You can see the first frame looks like this. And the last frame will look like this. 
So the setup's basically the same, although I made a little more complicated Voronoi fracture. And let me show you how I did that. So I took our W and I stuck it inside the Voronoi fracture. And inside the Voronoi fracture, I have a couple things in here. So I made this spline with the sketch tool and I just did a bunch of circles and stuff in the areas where I wanted the Voronoi fracture to have more fragments. And then I created a point generator set to exponential and I did the same thing. I just added some more cuts. Then I took, and to give myself a little variation, I went into geometry glue and I enabled that and I set it to cluster and I have about 3,100 clusters or so. You can see what it does is it essentially glues together the fragments. So the smaller number you have here gives you bigger chunks glued together. And the larger number you have here, let's say 5,000 or so, the more bits you have. So I'll leave it at 3,100. And then I did the same thing. I went under selection and turned on inside faces. I did the same thing with the dynamic body. I set it to add velocity peak. And then in the effectors tab, I have a few different things. So in my first pass, I'm using the push apart in the scale mode. So I have it set to scale apart and I have the radius set to 100. I'm using this to form these cracks. The push apart, I'm using a few fields here. I'm using a linear field to wipe across these cracks across the entire surface. And then I'm using four spherical fields. And these fields, I put one here, I put one here, I put one here. And I put one here. And those, in this case, to just animate up a little earlier, you can see that they kind of make those areas a little smaller. And then I created another push apart. The other one is set the same way as we did in the previous setup. I have it set to push apart. I have the radius set to 20. So you can see, watch, here's what this one does. So you got these little spheres that are pushing in those areas first, and then you have an overall arcing one. So then I did a plane effector. I have it set to Y negative five, and I'm reusing the fields, the random field and the linear field. So let me show you what this one looks like. See, so it's just giving it a little bit of downward push. And then if you turn on the dynamics again, you get your little cracks and then it falls. So next we took that same setup and we created two emitters. The first emitter is the same as we did before. It's set to the inside faces and it just animates with the objects. The second emitter, which is this one, this one is set to shot. And what it does is it just shoots out a particle stream when this cracks. And I have the particle count set low so that this can play back and see it's just pushing particles through those cracks. And then if I turn on the streaks, they're just like the previous setup. So that's about it for this week. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench. And don't forget to check out the blog at workbench.tv. I'm Sev, and we will see you next week. <laughs>